So I've been using the new iPad Pro M4 for about a month now. And there's no doubt that this is the most powerful iPad that you can get your hands on. But should you buy it? Well, that's the big question that we're tackling today. In this iPad Pro review, we'll dive into who exactly this iPad is designed for, and I'll be sharing my honest thoughts and experiences while using the device for the past month. So if you're on the fence about upgrading, or you're just curious about what the M4 has to offer, then this video is for you. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to stay updated on future tech insights and reviews. Your support allows me to keep creating content just like this one. Now, without further ado, let's get started. First, let's dive into the design and display of the iPad Pro M4. Apple has once again delivered on its promise of sleek aesthetics. And the 11 inch model that I've been using is incredibly thin and lightweight. It's been a joy to hold and it effortlessly slips into any bag, making it perfect for creativity and productivity on the go. So this year, Apple has shaved off some millimeters on the iPad Pro series, making the 11 inch the second thinnest device that they have at 5.3 millimeters, right behind the 13 inch, which is an impressive 5.1 millimeters. While it's great engineering, honestly, I don't know who asked for a thinner iPad. Personally, I wouldn't have minded a thicker iPad if it meant we got a bigger battery, but that's just me. But I will say that the iPad Pro this year feels solid and premium, so there's no need to worry about bending issues. And this year, Apple moved the front-facing camera to the side, which is perfect for landscape video calls and FaceTime. They also removed the ultra-wide camera on the back, but honestly, I don't know how many people were using the cameras on the iPad to begin with. I know I wasn't, so personally, it's not a huge loss for me. Now to get to the star of the show, the display. We have a stunning Ultra Retina XDR display, and this thing is a beauty, with stacked OLED panels that deliver a whole new level of brightness and color accuracy. It's noticeably brighter than previous models, with deeper blacks and vibrant colors, which are what OLEDs are known for. But of course, the mini LED display on the previous iPad is no slouch either. It's still an excellent display for all types of tasks. Both displays, of course, have their strengths, but the OLED's gonna give you those deeper blacks and vibrant colors, which can be a tempting reason to upgrade. Regardless, whether you choose to stick with your current iPad that has a mini LED or upgrade to the OLED, both displays are gonna be gorgeous when consuming content and just everyday tasks. Now, let's talk about performance. The M4 chip is a beast, there's no doubt about that. But here's the thing. In my day-to-day -day usage, which include tasks like browsing the web, email, and social media, I haven't been blown away compared to the difference of my iPad Pro M1 version. Now, before you come at me, let me clarify, yes, the M4 is objectively more powerful than the M1, we're not arguing that. But the M1 was already a powerful chip to begin with, and it handled everything I needed with ease. I never felt that it stuttered or that it lacked any type of power for my type of usage. So for me, and for probably most people, the jump in performance really isn't noticeable. However, we can't deny that the iPad Pro M4 is a multitasking champ. So if you're wanting the best iPad to utilize for like editing 4K videos, gaming, and by juggling a bunch of apps simultaneously, then yeah, the M4 is not going to disappoint you. It's been incredibly smooth and responsive under the heaviest loads. And when it comes to loading apps and games, it's been really fast. But again, for basic things like checking your email, just browsing the web and social media sites, there's no difference when compared to the M1. The bottom line here is that the iPad Pro M4 is a beast, especially for those who need the extra power. But for casual users, the M1 and the M2 iPad Pros are still a fantastic option. So you might not need to splurge on the M4. But if you are pushing the limits on your current iPad and you feel that it is getting sluggish and it's not able to keep up, then yeah, I mean, an upgrade at that point definitely makes sense if you are relying on your iPad heavily, let's say a MacBook or something else. But before we move on to the accessories, I wanna take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University. When I was in school, taking notes on an iPad was a game changer for me. 
It kept me organized and helped me stay on top of my studies. And the new iPad Pro could be a great companion for you too if you are thinking about going back to school. And if you are particularly interested in a career in tech, SNHU offers one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. Specifically, their computer science degree can help you gain the skills needed to enter one of the top growing fields. You'll learn popular programming languages like Python, SQL, C++, Java, and you'll get experience in full stack development and cloud integration using JavaScript, NoSQL, and AWS. SNHU's online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation, making it an affordable option for many. Go to the link below, snhu.edu forward slash Ashley to see what the current average salary is for a developer and to request free information about the program. When you request information, a real person will hop on a call to discuss how the program can benefit you personally. So again, check out the link in the description to learn more. Now, let's dive into the accessories that complement the iPad Pro and 4. The Apple Pencil and the Magic Keyboard. Are they essential? Well, let's break it down. The Apple Pencil is definitely a step up from the previous versions with improved precision, palm rejection, and pressure sensitivity. And if you're an artist, a note taker, or just love using a stylus, you'll appreciate these upgrades. But if you do have an older iPad, the new Apple Pencil Pro is not backwards compatible, nor is the older Apple Pencil compatible with the M4. Well, unless you have the USB-C version, which is a bummer. Because Apple moved the camera to the side of the iPad, it caused them to change the magnets and charging system. So unfortunately that means the previous Apple Pencil, it, it basically just can't charge on the new iPad and vice versa. Since there are new magnets in this one that correspond to the magnets on the iPad. Since I'm not an artist and I just use my iPad for taking notes, having to shell out cash for a new Apple Pencil was disappointing. Now don't get me wrong, the new features are cool. I do like the haptic feedback on the new Apple Pencil Pro, but they're just not needed for my current workflow. I was tempted to buy the cheaper USB-C version, but the lack of magnetic charging system on that was a deal breaker for me since I just wanna be able to set it and forget it and not have to worry about recharging my Apple Pencil. But along with the new Apple Pencil, the Magic Keyboard also got a refresh. We now have better key travel, a larger trackpad, and an aluminum feel. So it's a great option for a laptop-like experience. And this year they also added the function row keys, which is a nice touch. However, it does attract fingerprints like crazy. And it leaves the iPad exposed if you're not using it with the keyboard. Just like the Apple Pencil, the older Magic Keyboards are not compatible with this one either. So bottom line is the accessories are cool, don't get me wrong, but they're not essential for everyone. If your iPad is used for mainly casual use, you can probably skip them. But if you're a pro user who needs the extra functionality and convenience for productivity, the Apple Pencil and Magic Keyboard can definitely elevate your game. So all in all, just remember, if you are upgrading, you'll need the iPad and the accessories and the price tag for all of those can essentially rival a MacBook. So consider your needs and budget before diving in. Okay, so let's dive into iPadOS for the iPad Pro M4. Now, I mean, we already talked about it. The M4 is incredibly powerful, but it's tough to fully take advantage of this chip because of iPadOS limitations. For starters, the app selection on the iPad is quite limited when compared to offerings on Mac OS. So if you're a pro user who's needing high-end video editing or 3D rendering software, you might find iPadOS falling a bit short. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it has a ton of great apps, but the pro level stuff's not quite there yet, even though I feel like we've been saying this for years now. We'll see if Apple will eventually get there. And iPadOS is primarily designed for touch input. So that, I mean, it's great for casual use, but it can be a bit of a pain when you're trying to do more complex work and rely heavily on like a keyboard and mouse. 
Even with Stage Manager, some users find multitasking on the iPad less efficient than on a desktop or MacBook. And file management. While it's been improved, it's obviously not the best experience compared to using a laptop. But hey, it's not all bad, okay? iPadOS 18 does bring some cool features that help boost productivity and creativity. And the M4 chip makes everything feel buttery smooth and responsive. It's just a shame that some pro apps are very limited when compared to other offerings on macOS. Overall, iPadOS is a solid operating system, but it could definitely do more to harness that full power that we have in the M4 and create a truly seamless workflow for creatives and power users. Overall, honestly, I'm really enjoying this iPad. I mean, come on, it has a gorgeous OLED screen and the fact that it's lighter than previous models adds a nice touch. It's been a joy to use for everyday tasks and some light creative work, but of course, if I'm being honest, the differences between this and my iPad Pro M1 that I've had aren't really earth shattering. I mean, the screen itself and the lighter weight were enough for me to just wanna stick with this one, especially considering I did downsize to the 11 inch model from the 12.9 on my previous iPad. So, I mean, I feel like this one's perfect for my needs, but if it weren't for those, I probably would've just stuck with my M1 iPad Pro. So to answer the main question, who is this iPad for? Well, if you're rocking an older iPad, I would say like pre-M1, then this is definitely a worthy upgrade. The performance leap that you'd get from jumping to this one is gonna be huge. You'll feel it in almost everything that you do. Plus, I mean, the OLED screen and the Thunderbolt 4 are just gonna be major improvements that, I mean, you're gonna really enjoy. And for pros who need the top of the line power for video editing, 3D rendering, and all of that cool stuff, then yeah, the M4 is gonna be a game changer for sure. Well, and of course, the OLED display is highly invaluable for creators who prioritize stunning visuals. But if you already have an M1 or M2 iPad Pro, then yeah, the upgrade might not seem as tempting. Sure, the M4 is faster, but yeah, again, the difference is it, you're not gonna notice it. I highly doubt you're gonna notice it, uh, you know, for everyday tasks. Yeah, the OLED screen is awesome, and that's why I'm keeping it, but it obviously comes at a cost. So think about if that's worth the splurge for you. And for casual users who mainly use their iPad just for browsing the web, social media, or watching videos, then the M4 is gonna be overkill. And if you're on a budget, then an older iPad Pro model or even the Air might be a better fit for you. Ultimately, the decision to upgrade to the iPad Pro M4 is a personal choice. I mean, it's a fantastic device for sure, but it's not for everyone and that's okay. Weigh the pros and cons, consider your budget needs, and figure out if the M4 makes sense. But that's gonna wrap up my review of the iPad Pro M4. I hope this video gives you some valuable insights on the iPad Pro and helps you make an informed decision. And if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. I'd also love to hear what iPad you're currently using and if you're planning on making the jump to the M4. And hey, if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more tech reviews and insights. Until next time, stay tech savvy and I'll see you in the next one.